please join in a time of personal reflection. Those who are able, please rise for call to worship, which is found in your bulletin, and it's based on Psalm 111. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are, are the deeds of the, of the Lord. Lord. The, the righteousness of the Lord, the Lord endures forever. God's work is full of majesty and splendor. The Lord's work is marvelous. Let us remember the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. God's praise endures forever. This is our custom. Let us greet those around us with the sign of Christ's peace. For the opening hymn, hymn number 67, We Thy People Praise Thee.
please remain standing for the opening prayer found in your bulletin. Lord, we grow comfortable in our land and in our beds, but we can become suspicious of that which is unfamiliar. We are unsettled when we look upon others who are different than us, who are as foreigners and alien to us. Open our hearts and our minds that we might see all people we meet without suspicion and fear, but rather greet to one another as brothers and sisters with love and compassion. Let us be one. Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> The first scripture is from 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verses 8 through 15. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect so that they may also obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, we will also, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Living or fleeing the war-torn battlefield of their nation seeking refuge to save their children and their families from injury and death. And while other countries take in hundreds of thousands of Syrian refugees in our own nation, we have cautiously taken in 10,000. The public discourse has been that Syrian refugees might be terrorists. They might hide under the guise of their nationality and their status as refugees. And so we can't let them in. They are unclean to us. We have heard over the last several months opinions about undocumented aliens in our nation. And somehow having a piece of paper makes you welcome. Having no piece of paper makes you unwelcome. If you come from Mexico, you're presumed to have been a drug dealer or a rapist if you cross the border into this country. And so you are treated and thought of as unclean. It's not too long ago that people lived in fear of people who were infected with HIV. And people did not want to sit in their vicinity or touch the objects that they touched for fear that it might be contagious and they too might become infected. We live in a land where, whether we admit it or not, people judge one another based upon the color of their skin. I recently overheard a conversation in which someone said, there was a black man on the sidewalk, but he was well dressed implying that if he was not well-dressed, he would be someone to be suspicious of. 
We live in a land where people give us messages that we take into ourselves, and whether we are aware of it or not, are the basis for our biases and our prejudices. People are afraid to be seen with someone who's gay or lesbian for fear that they might think that you are too. Those are the modern day versions of being unclean. The notion of being unclean in scripture has a different basis. In scripture, the notion of being unclean has to do with the presumption that God is punishing you. And if God, if you are not in God's favor, people don't want to hang around you. In the scriptural context of the gospel from Luke, where Jesus meets these ten lepers who are healed, the presumption is, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> the presumption is that by virtue of having leprosy, they have been punished by God and therefore are not welcome into the temple, are not welcome among believers. It's not that they have a disease, it's they have a disease that is believed to have been inflicted by God as punishment for sin. And so they are kept away, identified publicly by the mark of leprosy inflicted upon them by God. And that makes it all the more interesting in the story when Jesus heals the ten lepers. Because if you watch the words carefully, the first reference to there being a change or transformation as a result of meeting Jesus is not that they have been healed. The first reference is that they have been made clean. <clears throat> and even when the nine go off and the one returns, he returns with the excitement, not that he's been healed, but that he's been made clean. He now feels welcome in the temple. He now feels welcomed in the, the embrace and the love of God. And his gratitude when he prostrates himself before Jesus in, to thank Jesus for what has happened is based upon the fact that he has gone from being an outcast to being someone who is welcomed. You and I live in this balance between casting people out and welcoming them in. We have that sign outside that says, all are welcome here, as an introduction to what we would like our church to be. We would like our church to be a place where all are welcome, where there are no outcasts. dare I say, where there are no prejudices? Can we say that that sign outside that says all are welcome here means that in this place no one judges you by the color of your skin, or by your ethnic background, or by your language, or by your sexual orientation, that here we all welcome everyone? Can we assume that the words on that sign mean that we have been freed from our biases and our prejudices, our prejudgments, and our labels of clean and unclean? Jesus not only heals the ten lepers, 
but transforms them from being unclean to being clean. You and I must be aware of the biases and the prejudices that we carry within our hearts. Not because of a fear of God's judgment. We shouldn't purge ourselves of those things because we want to make God happy. Or because we want to earn points and get into heaven. We should purge ourselves of those biases and those indiscriminate ways in which we exclude people because in so doing, we miss opportunities. We miss an opportunity to greet a brother or a sister whom God has sent into our lives. We miss an opportunity to be a witness to the love and presence of God by the way in which we treat one another. The message of the gospel is not just a story about who was thankful and who was not. For certainly, I'm sure that we've all heard sermons about the gratitude of that one leper, now clean, who has returned to Jesus. We've heard stories about being grateful and being thankful. We've heard stories about the ways in which God has blessed us all, and we have not noticed. We've been admonished to be more appreciative of God's blessings and God's compassion for us. But I think that the gospel is really one to point out the whole sociological experience of lepers in a society that believes itself to be made up of the children of God, the chosen ones, the elect. You and I who call ourselves Christians, you and I who pride ourselves in being part of a church that has a rainbow flag and all our welcome sign out front. You and I would call ourselves among the chosen, among those whose faith is not based upon how much God will reward us, whose faith is not based upon a gospel of prosperity, the more grateful I am to God, the more God will bless me with bigger homes and better cars and larger bank accounts. But you and I are among the chosen who have had our vision corrected and our ears opened so that we might greet one another, black and white, brown and yellow, red and all the colors of the rainbow when we meet a stranger, when we meet someone who the world around us carries unjustified suspicion of, and we say, we don't carry that. We don't look through those glasses. We look through the glasses of Jesus Christ. The ones that help us to see past the superficial, but help us to see beyond those barriers that the world would set up because of national origin or language or documentation or skin color or religion. You and I hear a message from Jesus Christ himself telling us to transform the unclean into the clean. You and I have the power to turn the uncleaned into the clean, to open our hearts and our minds to those people we have shut out, people we have judged unworthy, the people with whom we have carried suspicion, and instead approach the world and the people in it as our brothers and sisters, welcoming the opportunity to greet and meet and love the stranger.
Let us stand and sing hymn number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Please be seated. Let us begin this time of prayer, lifting up those whose names appear in our prayer list, that together we can call upon our God on their behalf. We pray for the Adamses, for Kim Lemaire, for Jane Woodward, Mariana Freeman, June Stevens, Ruth Norton, Elaine McKee, Muriel Mayotte, Baksun Han, Lois Cotton, Dottie Klaus, Alice Bixby, and all our service men and women around the world. I now invite you to speak aloud the names of any particular persons or situations that have come to your attention so that we might share in your concern or gratitude and also lift them to God in prayer. Bob? Marsha Bolt. Marcia Bolt. Melanie? Uh, family friend Paul who's having heart health issues. Paul for need for healing. Sue? Friends and family in Florida and North Carolina. Friends and family in Florida, North Carolina. Lord, let us become of one mind and heart as we pray for the needs and concerns of our brothers and sisters who struggle around us, whether within our families and among our friends, or for our neighbors and community, or for those separated from us by many miles across our world. We lift up the people of Syria, and especially the city of Aleppo, where government forces are indiscriminately bombing and killing innocent civilians and children within that city and region. We pray for the people of the Caribbean, Haiti, the Bahamas, Florida, southern Georgia, north and south Carolina, who have lost loved ones, been injured, or are suffering now in the aftermath of Hurricane Matthew. May God's peace be theirs, and may the wider community provide much needed aid and assistance to heal and rebuild. We pray for our nation in the midst of a presidential election which has cast a shadow across our nation of racism, 
sexism, religious intolerance and isolationism, where women, immigrants, the LGBT community, people of color, color, other religions and the disabled have been debased and scapegoated in an appeal for votes. May our public discourse and civic conversation shift toward the values upon which our nation was founded and the better angels which our, which our faith in Jesus Christ inspires in our hearts and minds toward all people. We pray for the sick, the mentally ill, those struggling with addictions and those struggling with the loss of independence as they age. May God's healing presence restore health and wholeness strength and peace of mind and heart, for this we pray. We pray for our children and grandchildren, our nieces and our nephews, and all children whom we love. May we be generous sources of love, patience, gentleness, and understanding, nurturing them with the same love shown us by Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray now in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Each week we are reminded that the work of this church and the mission of our Lord requires all of us to participate. It certainly requires our financial aid and so I would encourage you now to be as generous as you are able.
Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving found in your bulletin. Lord our God, you have given us every good blessing so that we might share from our abundance. We offer what we have in gratitude and ask you to accept this offering which we receive on behalf of our church and the people we serve. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> it's contagious, David. <laughs> our closing hymn is number 98, To God Be the Glory. Please be seated. But those with announcements, uh, please come forward. I just wanted to say thank you for um, the meal that you helped to cook for the shelter last time, the, um, the pot roast meal. It felt like a great big warm hug to the women in the shelter. And um, they just, it truly touched their lives. It truly did. And um, they felt, I can, I can tell you completely and truly, they felt love. And I think that it truly makes a difference in their lives when, when that happens. So um, they asked if we would make pot, not pot roast, they asked if we would make meatloaf next time. So if anybody's up for a meatloaf with some potatoes and carrots and maybe a few onions, that would be awesome. I'm also going to need beverages and a dessert. So if you can see me after the service, if you can provide when, when any When is the next time you Oh, I'm sorry. It's October 20th, so okay. a week 
from Thursday. Okay, great. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Well, there's a pause. I want to recognize uh, Ricky Vonseca, who's in the back. If you've noticed that fantastic, beautiful bench that is now permanently attached to our front lawn, it was totally the result of Ricky's effort as a trying to get an Eagle Scout uh, award, and he rallied his troop and members of our community together, and they produced an amazing bench which now sits on our property outside. So I'd like to acknowledge Ricky for his hard work. Thanks, Ricky. This is just a brief update on the status of things to do with uh, the uh, the daycare center that we are speaking about, or speaking with, regarding uh, uh, establishing a daycare center in the basement of the church. We had a meeting on Wednesday. Actually, I had a meeting with the the uh, head of the of the daycare center, and uh, we've fundamentally reached an understanding. Now it's to work out the details, the what's and the when's and the how's and the wherefores. That's all happening over the next two weeks. I expect to be able to go to the next council meeting with a, an agreement uh, asking for approval for it to be signed. Thank you. I, j I want to make an announcement about a movie that is playing in local theaters. It's called Queen, Queen Latway. Am I saying that right? Queen Okatwe. Queen Okatwe. It is a film uh, that Ronnie brought to our attention. If you don't know Ronnie, Ronnie is one of our wonderful members of our church who, who came to us as a refugee from Uganda. And uh, Ronnie has embraced our church as we have had the privilege to embrace him. And he was telling some members of our church how much this movie gives uh, a window into what life is like in uh, Uganda. Uh, the movie has received rave reviews. There's a, a variety of uh, reviewing organizations out there. One of them, strangely enough, is called Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, Rotten Tomatoes rates movies on a scale of 1 to 100, with 100 being fantastic and probably anything below 50 being rotten. Uh, well, it has rated this movie a 91, so it's a it's a wonderful movie. It's being it's being shown uh, locally, and this evening it's being shown in Westboro at the Westboro Cinemas at 8 8, 8 p.m. Um, uh, some of us on the Deacons had discussed the other night of seeing if we could get a group of people together who might enjoy going to see this movie. I think it'll give you an insight into what life is like in third world countries. Certainly, what life has been like for for Ronnie, Ronnie's family still remains in Uganda. And so it's all the more pressing and touching that we have an understanding of how his heart is so torn between his life here with us and his life uh, back in Uganda with his wife and children. So if there is an interest, I would uh, ask you to kind of just tell me about it afterwards. And we'd plan on meeting at the Westboro Cinema. It's right on Route 9. Uh, it's the Regal Cinemas. Um, I, I'm 90% sure the show is at 8 p.m. this evening. If there are no other announcements, I'd invite folks to please stand and hold hands with folks in your vicinity and pray for God's blessing. Lord our God, we are grateful for the hands that we hold the hands of our brothers and sisters who, like us, struggle with their faith and who, like us, rejoice in the faith that has been granted to us. We ask your blessing upon all who are gathered here and upon all whose lives are intertwined with ours. May the grace of our God and Father be upon us all, and may we bring the good news to all we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our community sing is shalom to you in recognition of the fact that this past week the Jewish congregation met here on Monday and Tuesday and will be here again this coming week for Tuesday and Wednesday to celebrate Yom Kippur. So number 666. Six, six.